Hello and welcome back to my continued overview of the SMV 3400 SSDs from Synology and the E10M20 SSD and 10GBE combo cache card. Today we're continuing looking at 10GBE. We're still utilizing the two RAID 5 environments on our system here. Uh, one of which, storage pool 1, does not have SSD caching and storage pool 2 that does have SSD caching enabled with those two NVMe SSDs. Now, we've looked at Windows Upload Download, we've looked at AJA, we've looked at Blackmagic, and today we're looking at Atto Disk Benchmark. We're connected over 10GBE, and this 10GBE connection is running on an MTU of 9000 on the Synology NAS, and an MTU 9000 via a solo Thunderbolt 3 adapter on my local machine. So we've created those two map network drives you see there. I am supplying voiceover that was recorded um, a day or two after this was done due to the noise of the SA3400 that's running this rig. And you can find out a lot about that on uh, part one of this series where I showed you guys just how much noise was being generated by this device and why it made it absolutely impossible to conduct uh, these tests live. Uh, but what we're doing today is we're going to be running Atto Disk Benchmark on my Windows uh, 10 Professional laptop here with an SSD inside. And uh, we're going to be running on this SA3400 with that combo card. And what we want to see today is will Atto Disk Benchmark uh, show any different results on a RAID 5 array with those Ultrastar 10 TBs in a RAID 5, four of them, versus the same RAID setup with SSD caching enabled. So what I've done is installed Atto Disk Benchmark on my local machine. And from there, we are going to run Atto Disk Benchmark on either of these RAID 5 configurations now using 256 megabyte uh, file sizes. And we're going to go ahead and start that test now. Now the test has begun. And on the left hand side of the screen there, you should be able to see, I know I'm flicking back and forth from it, getting the resource monitor and the cache monitor up. Um, on the left hand side of the screen, you're going to see Atto Disk Benchmark sped up now. I'm going to make sure that completes itself pretty quickly to show um, the non cached RAID 5. And with each of those file sizes getting um, uh, selected by the Atto Disk Benchmark tool, we're going to see how the RAID 5 without cache compares against the one with cache. Now, it's worth highlighting a few things. First and foremost, the RAID 5 array means that even though I'm using a 10 GBE connection, and about over 10 GBE with the Sonic adapter, four disks in a RAID 5 array, even enterprise disks like this, are probably not going to give us a huge amount of speed. And we're using the 256 megabyte test file, so it's worth highlighting that as well. Now, what you may have noticed straight away is the non-cached RAID on the left saw much earlier write speeds. And again, a lot of that may be to do with the way Atto Disk Benchmark utilizes kind of a slightly more granular way of running its tests. And on the right hand side of the screen, you can see that there's a much higher earlier read rate. Now that will balance out throughout the video. And as we go through the read speeds and the write speeds around both of them, you do see them kind of cross swords halfway through the middle. And a lot of that is to do with the IOPS benefits and uh, multi-access environment that SSDs have and that caching benefit it brings to the system. SSD caching will not really show you a vast amount of benefits in a test like this, but what I will say is that what we're seeing here on screen is that the cache does seem to present some kind of benefits overall, and particularly if we look at the IOPS values, we can see that the cache side of things did produce better IOPS consistently later on, but both of them were pretty much identical earlier on because of the limitations of those hard drives. And it wasn't until we hit kind of the early quarter of those values that we started to see the benefits that SSD caching brought to those IOPS. But ultimately, in terms of read and write, I do think we can see performance benefits there over the 10G connection. Remember, these have been run not at the same time. They're one after the other. So it's not like one is affecting the other one. But now let's make our way over to a one gigabyte test file. Right, so we've begun our testing for a one gigabyte test file. So this is a test file that's four times bigger than that of the its predecessor. We're looking at the different uh, kind of creation of that utilizing Atto Disk Benchmark. 
and across the pair of them I would say I mean the time difference between them is near enough identical anyway because Atto disc benchmark isn't really about speed unless you're using particularly high-end media like NVMe but there was a steady read write of five to six hundred after the 512 mark uh, there were spikes uh, during the hard drive utilization you do generally find that in a RAID 5 environment during spin up and spin down but the cache side on the right hand side of the screen certainly produced better small file handling and higher um, read speeds later on the IOPS uh, definitely higher um, overall with the cache and although we are concentrating a lot more on the read right here because IOPS we soon figured out uh, weren't exactly vastly improved in this test environment with caching. I will say that in this test with the the difference between them was um, a little less clear as we got into the larger file sizes which isn't a huge surprise given that SSD caching is generally beneficial to smaller file sizes and once again remember that what the situ we're running here involves a lot of original created data. There isn't as much background caching and um, although you can see a difference between them, that difference is a little bit negligible uh, compared with if we were using lots of smaller file types. But again, most people who are going to be utilizing SSD bays in like a disk station NAS won't really be looking at it that way. But I do think we are seeing some promising stuff here anyway over the 1 gig 10 GBE Atto disk benchmark test. We do still have the pass mark test in the next video, but I'm quite pleased with the results so far. We have sped things up a little bit. And now we'll move on to the final stage of the testing, the 16 gigabyte test file via Atto. Right, so now we're looking at that 16 gigabyte massive test file. Even the generation of this file took longer. I'm, I'm speeding this up quite significantly because this round of tests did take a little bit longer due to the larger file sizes. It went through the different block groups. But straight away, very early doors, we were able to see that the speeds between them were near enough identical. We did see better read in the early stages from the cache side. But over time, it just kind of leveled out. Um, as we got to the larger file sizes, you could see that the drives and that RAID 5 environment across the Ultra Stars was kind of pushed to its limit. And it ended up being probably the most significant bottleneck overall. Now, we, the reason we went for a RAID 5 with these Ultra Stars is because we wanted to find a way that the enterprise nature of the hard drives didn't max out the 10 GB connection, but we didn't want the drives to present a bottleneck. So we thought a RAID 5 with these Ultra Stars could give us six to 700 megs typically, and therefore the SSD cache could maybe make up the rest. And that's something that became a little bit more apparent later on with the write speeds on the cache side of the screen there. Again, the difference between them is even smaller this time for the most part, apart from towards the end there when we started reaching the limitation of those hard drives. But overall, because we're dealing with such mammoth files here at 16 gig, that's when we started to see problems. So overall between them, I do think we did see benefits utilizing cache uh, present in the Atto Disk Mark score here. And again, Atto Disk Benchmark is generally when you're, uh, this is a tool that I would recommend to people if you are running high-end uh, file environments. And to me, this did show that the SSDs for caching being used in the RAID 5 around the right-hand side, you this did, do a good job of showing that benefit in multi-file environments when you're uh, kind of bombarding those same files over and over again, those same file types. Whereas uh, previous tests like AJA, they're good for like 4K editing and stuff like that. And the Windows upload and download was more of a generic test. But this has been the Atto Disk Benchmark test, uh, predominantly of read and write speed, but a little bit of IOPS there on the cache and no cache volumes thanks to the SNV3400 SSDs and the E10M20 combo 10G and SSD caching card. Do stay tuned for the next part in this series where we will be looking at another quick hard drive test tool, uh, the second to last part of this series where we're going to be looking at 
a performance test using Passmark, where we're just going to be looking at the overall spread of read-write um, in a slightly different way to looking at today. And do stay tuned for the final part in this series, where we will be looking at virtual machine performance. So do stay tuned for the next part. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. Click like if you did, and click subscribe to learn more. I will see you next time.